Intrigue. Intrigue. Mazzy here. This video is going to start out uh, showcasing a brand new box set that only came out in the UK. So if you're in the States or elsewhere, it looks like you're going to have to get it imported uh, from the United Kingdom. And it's called Intrigue. And this is music from the 1980s. So what I'm going to do is use this box set Intrigue as a starting point and then showcase some records I have of some of the bands that are in this collection. Now, box sets, especially multi-artist box sets, don't always work, but this one is a spectacular set and I am all in on it. I've listened to it twice through, fully twice now, and then selective cuts. I know most of this music, but there are some artists that I'm familiar with by name, and I just never got around to picking up. Some I have on CD, but the records I show after I showcase the box set are records from artists uh, that are included in this box set. So let's start with Intrigue. Stephen Wilson, of course, a member of Porcupine Tree, uh, also a number of wonderful uh, prog solo records, and of course the mixologist, uh, remastering, remixing engineer who's worked on a plethora of uh, prog records, everything from King Crimson to Yes, to Jethro Tull, to XTC, sort of that pop progressive style movement. Now, some will say XTC is not a prog band, but I would say progressive rock. And I'm gonna read uh, from the hype sticker in this to give you exactly an idea what this is. We'll dive into this, I'll showcase uh, the wonderful cover art as well as talk about some of these artists here. 58 tracks exploring the creativity, experimentation, and progressive spirit of alternate music alternative British music from 1979 to 1989. Quote, this is my personal curated attempt to redress the balance and to perhaps introduce any 80s skeptics out there to the idea that conceptual thinking and ambition didn't suddenly evaporate in 1977. Ambitious, weird, and thrilling music was all around in the 1980s if you looked in the right places. I wanna go through Intrigue, these wonderful uh, cover creations. Very graphic, very Bauhaus type styling. I do not know how limited it is, but it's really well done. The records are well pressed, they're flat, they sound good. Uh, my guess is they're cut from digital tapes. I know Stephen Wilson is not an all-analog guy, but, but when you're doing a comp like this, I assume. Now, my copy came with a signed uh, separate print, but this is minimalist photography. It's so, it's so stunning on here. I'm going to go through some records in my collection. Some of them are the actual uh, albums or cuts that uh, Stephen Wilson pulled for this collection. So I want to kind of showcase those and things that I got into. And obviously one, not my f number one choice, but a fantastic album early by XTC. And I think he picks on here, Complicated Game, the closing track. That starts out with a very moody, uh, sort of slow buildup. And by the time that ends, Andy Partridge is the screaming and howling. And this is a beautiful album. This really crossed over from their punk leanings in the late 70s to New Wave. Now this is 1979, so this is the earliest period on this collection. I'd say one of the most important uh, songs to start off the 80s with in terms of uh, British post-punk music is Joy Division's Love Will Tear Us Apart. Now, this is not included on this comp, but this is an amazing record. Uh, this is my 12-inch 45. Remember I mentioned that uh, Rough Trade had an outlet in San Francisco and I picked this 12-inch record up then. I just, this was played in every dance club and every club uh, prior to uh, bands going on at the time. And this is, is an explosion of bass and drums and just what, what a, a really interesting uh, song. And of course that was from Unknown Pleasures. Uh, this is an American copy I got uh, early on with this great uh, Peter Seville treatment on the cover, uh, art director who worked with uh, Factory Records a lot. But um, Stephen Wilson does include a song from this. He includes Eternal from Closer. This is their second album. 
And, uh, you know, they burn bright for a very short time until, uh, unfortunately, Ian Curtis's uh, end of his life. Uh, this is, in a way, a graduation of the last album. It's a little more ambitious. They move from a track, a studio, to a 24 track. I believe they recorded this at Pink Floyd's studio, so they had more bells and whistles to play with. And again, another original copy uh, I got from Rough Trade in uh, mid-summer of 1980. Fantastic record. Stephen Wilson does include uh, a song, All My Colors from Echo and the Bunny Man uh, from 1981, but I wanna showcase this because again, another original British copy I got. I was in London in uh, spring of 1980 and I had never heard of Echo and the Bunny Man. This is their debut album, Crocodiles. And when I saw this, name of this band, I cracked up. I thought it was the most interesting original name at the time in the spring of 1980. So I picked this up in the UK. So I have to show this uh, in terms of an important album in the 1980s. Of course, I'm all, all, all over this band out of Liverpool, uh, Echo and the Bunny Man. Uh, this song with Crocodiles, Rescue. The song Rescue was played on college radio in San Francisco, KUSF. And I just picked this up really Hadn't heard anything about it. Picked it up, brought it home, and I was bowled over. So I went to see them like every time they came out uh, in the 1980s. But they became one of the more interesting bands that really were a, very original in their sounds. And they're still uh, you know, touring to this day. But Echo and the Bunny Man from Liverpool, Crocodiles. Stephen Wilson picked a fantastic single, and I realized I don't have it. I have it on a comp, a CD comp. But I don't have Ghost Town by the Specials, like a six minute killer track. And I think it's the, the last track they did with the original lineup. But I got their first two albums. Uh, the Specials, of course, of this label, uh, Two Tone was the, the British ska label with the Specials and Selector. And I love these first two records especially. There are a handful of artists and records I'm not showing that Stephen Wilson does include on this comp. New Order, for instance. Uh, orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. I do want to give a shout out to this album by the band Japan. I did see them for the first time when their first album came out, just accidentally at a place called Dingwalls in London. And they were really kind of more of a glammy rock and roll band. Um, but what they became uh, with David Sylvian and um, his brother, Steve Jansen, they became this really, really interesting band. Of course, uh, Richard Barbieri and Mick Karn, uh, an amazing uh, bass player. This album is very influenced by Kraftwerk again, and there's a lot of electronic influences of German electronic artists uh, that really were crossing over in some of these uh, post-punk bands uh, and industrial bands. Uh, but this has a little bit of a slickness to it, but also has influence again from Kraftwerk and the German electronic composers of the time. But this is this is a really, really, um, mature album for this period, I think. And they really, you know, weaved a, a certain uh, various styles of music. And I just adore everything uh, Japan does, especially around this time and beyond. And of course, uh, the various uh, projects that members of this band worked on uh, subsequent to Tin Drum. When you talk about 80s music, uh, this whole scene of experimental and uh, progressive music. You can't not talk about The Cure. Now, Stephen Wilson picked Faith by The Cure from their uh, third album, but I wanted to show this uh, 17 Seconds. I just love that track. I think it's a killer track. And when I first saw them, they started out, and I, I can't remember which song they started out with, but it started out like a locomotive, and it went on for 10 minutes, 10 long minutes of slow and build up without a word. They're very influenced by the prog stuff of the 70s, late 60s, into the 70s. But they, a lot of these bands like The Cure that are progressive, they take that kind of music and make it theirs. Usually the tracks aren't overly long like the you know bloated prog stuff of the 70s. But they take it, they add more electronics in a different way. It's got a darker sound to it than a lot of the bands, uh, less classical uh, fusions than those bands of the early 70s, The Cure from 1980. The Cocteau Twins. Stephen Wilson picked Domino from this album. This is probably the dream pop masterpiece. Lush reverb, overdubbed 
ethereal female vocals. Just It just goes through your head, through your speakers. Fantastic record. Uh, this is on 4AD, of course. These great Vaughn Oliver covers, the designer who worked on most of the 4AD covers. Uh, this is a gorgeous, lush soundscape. And, of course, everything is great by um, the Cocteau Twins. But this, this project, Treasure, I think, is the masterpiece. If there's a masterpiece in their catalog, this is the one. And I highly recommend this one as well. So uh, this is uh, Domino. Again, the song is Stephen Wilson included on this comp. Next is David Sylvian, of course, a member of Japan who I uh, spoke about earlier. On this uh, Intrigue collection, David Sylvian's Brilliant Trees was selected by Stephen Wilson, his debut, but I wanted to go with uh, Secrets of the Beehive. I think this is his most accessible album, his most commercial album. Not that it's not necessarily my favorite record, but I think if you don't have any David Sylvian, this is probably the easiest one to get into. Of course, it has what might be his only familiar hit in Let the Happiness In, which is a, is a masterpiece of a song as far as I'm concerned. And all over this record, there's some really great uh, trumpet playing from Mark Isham, the sort of ethereal jazz uh, player, musician that is really gorgeous. Uh, this is a great cover. This is on Virgin Records. Uh, he has reissued most of his catalog. Unfortunately, he's changed the covers. There's a lot of environmental black and white portraits of himself on the new covers rather than this beautiful still life. And uh, that was an artistic uh, choice that he made. Uh, again, this beautiful, brooding, minimal, low baritone voice. And this is Secrets of the Beehive, David Sylvian. Dallas Carr. The name comes from a... Uh, Surrealistic painting by Salvador Dali, and this is a really interesting and unique record. Uh, this is a collaboration between the bass player again from Japan, uh, Mick Karn, with Peter Murphy, the vocalist from Bauhaus, who has made all those great solo albums as well. And he's got one of those really kind of, again, brooding, post-punk voices. And if you haven't heard a Bauhaus record or a Peter Murphy record, you owe yourself to check those out. But this is the one-off collaboration they did together. Of course, this is a, this is a really lovely, uh, lovely artwork on the cover. So uh, I just love this record. And uh, this is on the collection also, the Stephen Wilson uh, box set. Stephen Wilson picked Waking the Witch uh, from side two of this album from the Ninth Wave. Uh, this beautiful, uh, elongated, conceptual uh, piece on side two of this record. Of course, Running Up the Hill, that got a resurgence in the past years on this record. This is her most uh, popular record, her most, I wouldn't even call this a commercial record, but it's be, it has become commercial. This is an artistic masterpiece, not unlike Dark Side of the Moon, I dare say. Uh, ironically, it was uh, David Gilmore who suggested and hooked her up to EMI Records and got her a deal with EMI based on her amazing talent. But I love this record. As much as I love this record, this is her most adventurous record. It came out prior uh, to Hounds of Love, and this is The Dreaming. There's some stunningly interesting, out there, avant-garde, surrealistic imagery on this record. Arrangements, uh, vocal patterns, musicianship. Just a lovely, lovely record. There is the voice of David Gilmore on one track on here, Pull Out the Pin. Uh, but uh, love, love both these records. Uh, this is the one, again, that uh, Stephen Wilson chose to represent on this box set. I've all watched Russell is the sort of the brainchild, the head of uh, 4AD Records. And uh, Stephen Wilson picked a different uh, song from a different album. And I think they did three albums under the moniker this mortal coil and what this band or this super group you might um, call them these are various artists who are on 4ad uh, people from the cocteau twins and other uh, bands that called together that came together to do this conceptually creative series of records doing covers covers from artists like gene clark and emmy lou harris and uh, just really beautiful uh, songs that are kind of dirgy. Again, dream pop, dirgy, dark, 
minimal atmospheric uh, covers. And there's an amazing uh, CD box set, a long box set that has the uh, three albums on two CDs and it has an extra C CD called Originals that has all the original uh, versions of these songs that this Mortal Coil uh, covers on here. So uh, a wonderful series of records. This is the only one I have on vinyl. I have them all on CD, this Mortal Coil. So thanks for watching this overview of Intrigue, this really cool box set created by Stephen Wilson that really covers the creative spirit of progressive music of the 1980s out of the United Kingdom. And not just the hits, not the songs you hear over and over again on the top 10, top 20 on all the charts when you hear 80s music with that clinky uh, electronic drum sound and those kind of like tinkly tangly electronic piano. No Wang Chung tonight on here, baby. Uh, but this dig digs deeper into the creative, you know, the industrial sounds, the electronic sounds, the Bauhausian sounds, if you will, of these really great artists. Again, just one man's uh, curation, but I would agree with pretty much everything on this. And I've learned, and I've got turned on to several uh, artists on here, but uh, this is a stunningly beautiful set of records that I think so far might be the best box set of 2023. Intrigue, Stephen Wilson presents. Thank you for watching. Mazzy loves you.